Hey guys, welcome back to the next video in this uh, channel. Today we're not going to continue a series. I'm actually going to be sharing you some very interesting things. We're going to be talking about how to get a job as a 3D modeler in the 3D industry. We're going to be talking about the industry. I'm going to be sharing a little bit of my career, how I've been approaching this last 10 years. And uh, I want to show you some cool stuff. So let's get to it. There we go. So today we don't have any like special or anything. Let me just move my camera here. I feel like I'm a little bit. There we go. Looks better. Got a little bit of a new light setup over here. There's a little light bulb giving me better uh, lighting, I hope. Let me know if you like it. So, um, a little bit of history, guys. We're going to be talking about the industry, how it works, how you can get into it, how you can get better, how you can get a job, how you can make a living out of this, which is uh, what everyone wants to learn, right? So, uh, back in 2011, I was actually studying medicine. I was supposed to become a doctor. That's uh, That was my first choice in career. I later on, later on discovered that that was not exactly what I wanted to do, and instead I wanted to tell stories through video games, movies, uh, commercials, whatever. And, uh, and I got into a studio in uh, one of our local cities here where I learned 3D. And I want to show you guys a couple of the things that I did <laughs> when I just started. There we go. We have it. Yeah, there we go. So these are some of my first 3D models. And the reason I'm showing you this, I usually don't show this sort of stuff <laughs> to anyone because I'm, of course, completely embarrassed by them. But the thing is, you, you need to learn. Uh, you need to start somewhere. You start at zero and then you c continuously go up, up, up until you get to a very good position. So I did this character. <laughs> He's called Old John. He's from my D&D &D campaign. And um, it was modeled in Maya. I did a little bit of sculpting here on the cloth in ZBrush, and then the textures were just like very bad, the cloth. I wanted to simulate this, but I couldn't do it. So yeah, this was uh, one of the first like complete characters that I did. And if we check the, the date, I think we can actually check when this was done. Ju June 24, 2011. So that's a long time ago, guys. Almost, almost a little bit over 10 years, actually. Uh, one of my first faces, uh, I think this one wasn't that bad. I mean, the face was okay-ish in proportions. Uh, I did this like finger in ZBrush when ZBrush back, was back there in 3.5 and whatever. This is like first super small uh, element. And and the reason I'm showing you this, guys, is one, I want to I wanna share where I started, of course, but I want to make sure that you understand that everyone, every single artist you've ever encountered started at zero. They, they were not born with all the knowledge. So... Whenever someone asks me, what's the first thing I need to do to make a living or to get into the industry? My answer is practice. I mean, just grab your tablet, grab your PC, open Maya, open ZBrush, open whatever software you want to use and do it. Just start practicing, practice, practice, practice. I have a personal motto that I've been using for a long time that says always learning, always improving. I, I like to live by it. And, and every single day I try to learn something new. Sometimes it's something very simple, five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes of uh, some research here and there to learn a new tool or something. And sometimes I, I spend a couple of days learning a completely new technique or workflow just to improve my um, just to improve my, my 3D knowledge and my, uh, of course, my uh, expertise, right? So everyone has to start somewhere. I started in this. This is these are like the first things that I did when I was uh, a just a beginner 3D artist. And surprisingly enough, and this is why I wanted to to share this with you. I got a job thanks to this sort of works like with just with this guys like I remember I showed this like radioactive door uh, that I textured in Photoshop by myself. I I remember that I showed this uh, as, a, as a sort of my portfolio back then and I was lucky enough to get a job on a medium sized studio in that same city where they were doing assets and stuff for video games. So they're like a production house for other uh, studios. And uh, they, they're still on, they're still, um, what's the word? They're still operating, they're a very uh, reputable place to, to be. And, um, and the cool thing about that is that they trusted that I knew the basics of the tools and I could learn even more as I went uh, through the um, through the production pipeline that they had, right? Like they had some exercises and some extra things. So, so that's my first piece of advice. Do not be afraid to apply to a job if you feel like you can uh, uh, like give something to the job. And that means if you're a very creative person, if you have a lot of like uh, imagination and you can write scripts or, or storyboards, if you can sketch, like if you can do anything to help the studio, then you could become an asset. Maybe you're not at the level that you want to be in regards to 3D modeling or texturing or ZBrush. And that means that they're probably going to delegate to you 
tasks that are going to be a little bit easier, right? So, but that doesn't matter. That just gets your foot in the door and, and just you go from there. So uh, before we move forward to, to my main advice on how to get into the industry, I just want to point out that there's three main ways in which you can approach this uh, sort of like 3D workflow or 3D, 3D job, right? You can be a freelancer, meaning you work from home, you do your own stuff, you work for someone else, you you freelance, you're not gonna have something secure every single week of the year, but you're gonna be able to pick and choose which works or, or jobs you wanna take on, right? So that's that's one of the ones that um, that exists, that's one way to do it. I personally am a freelancer, so I, I do that as, a, as part of my job. The second one is to create your own studio, which I also have, it's a small studio, we're only five people here, but we, we do um, offer our services to the industry, right? To local restaurants or local museums. Like we've been doing some, some very nice work here in the local industries and in the national even. Uh, we've done some, some cool collaborations with very uh, famous Mexican brands. So that's the other way. You can be a freelancer. You can start your own thing, like a small studio by yourself with a couple of people. You can um, just work with someone else and create like an association or something. And the third one, which is one of the... the roads that most people take is of course to work for someone on a studio or on a, on, on somewhere right on a place so in any of those three things the the first element that they're going to ask of you is your expertise you need to prove that you know how to do things and i'm going to show you the best way in which you can know whether or not you have what it takes to work wherever you want so let's say for instance that i would like to apply to I believe that there was this studio in, in Europe called Digic, Digic Studios. They do, there we go. They do like cinematics. I think they did the cinematics for The Witcher. And if you go to any site, any any big studio name site, they will have a place where they will be, uh, they will have like the career path, right? And you're going to be able to find which positions are currently open. Sometimes the position that you're looking for might not be open at that specific time, but I encourage you to always like keep checking there just to make sure that you know, even if you're not applying yet, like even you're, if you're planning to apply like two years in the future or something, just go check your like dream job and see what you're looking for. Because one of the main mistakes that people make, and I did that mistake, I, I actually am uh, guilty of that, is we, we we think we know what they want and and we start practicing like you see this thing that they're like oh they need a zebra artist and they need this and this and this and this and then you actually check what they need and they're like no we, we don't need any zebra charges right now we may need uh like hard surface modelers or we might need uh people that know how to texture with mario or with substance painter so you might find a job that'll get you in the industry before you complete whatever you were thinking about doing if you focus specifically on what they're looking for. So let's take a look, for instance, at the 3D animator. There's a lot of animators out there that, out there that want to know how to do this sort of thing. So whenever you look into the, the positions, you're going to see what I call hard skills and soft skills. Hard skills are actually like things that you need to know. Like you're not going to get a 3D animation job if you don't know how to 3D animate. That's that's a given. You're, you're just not going to get it. So you need to know, for instance, right here, uh, knowledge of motion builder software. Okay, that's a hard skill that you need to know. Knowledge of other animation methods, like 2D animation, stop motion. Okay, these are pluses, of course, but they are hard skills that you need to acquire. Uh, proficiency in Maya, very important. So all of those uh, that are like very... Um, software jealous the word they are like I only use cinema for the or I only use blender or I only use 3d studio max you need to be flexible you need to look at where you want to work and, and see what they're using that's why we have something called industry standard and even though I love all of the the different applications I've used cinema 4d and 3d studio max and Maya Maya is the one that I use the most because that's the standard of the industry later on if, if in three or five or seven years blender or uh, I don't know motion no what's the other Reno or whatever like if you get like a completely different software well you need to learn it in order to to be ready for the for the jobs that are going to be coming right so proficiency in maya and then we have the soft skills the soft skills are all of those things that that are not easily evaluated like people are not going to say like see a chart and see how much of that skill you have you're going to have to demonstrate that by virtue of your work right so for instance high level of creativity attention to details discipline working style ability to keep deadlines in work in a disciplined way all of those things are just general things that you need to have as a, as a human for like human interaction, especially as a job to make sure that you can follow instructions, uh, deliver what they're asking for and making sure that you can communicate properly. So 
those skills, my best advice is if you feel like, for instance, you're not very good at public speaking or you're not very good at communicating or maybe English, like with me, it's your, it's your second language and you need to practice a little bit more. Well, those are things that you're going to have to learn. Maybe take a class, maybe buy a book or, or just like learn it from somewhere because you need those skills as they're going to be part of the whole kit. Okay. So first step to getting a job in the industry. If you want to work in a big studio like they check pictures, you need to see what they're looking for and you need to compare and see whether or not the things that they're looking for are the things that you can offer them. OK, now here's the here's, here's the, the cool thing. Sometimes you as an artist will have things that they're not looking for, but would be beneficial to the team. Make sure to add those on your resume, on your portfolio, on your presentation, on your cover letter, whatever you're going to be sending. Make sure you mention things that you're good at. For instance, in my case, I've always mentioned that I'm good at public speaking. I know how to teach. I know how to give classes. I know how to explain. I know how to show someone a new process. So someone that sees my curriculum, they're going to be, okay, this guy fulfills the 3D requirements that we want. And he's also good as a leader. So maybe he could fill a leadership position later on. And that makes you a more valuable asset, okay, for the, for the company and, of course, for yourself. So that's the first step. You're going to make sure to go into the uh, into whatever like company you want, you want to work for and you're going to see what they're going for. The next one, I find it very motivational. However, there's a lot of people out there, hopefully you're not one of those, that find it uh, detrimental or depressing. <laughs> And that is you need to compare yourself and you need to check how everyone else, else is doing on the industry, right? Now, ArtStation, hopefully most of you already know what ArtStation is. It's like our portfolio to the world. Uh, some of you might have uh, messaged me or found me here on, on ArtStation. I'm like, I'm Abraham Leal. You can you can find me right here. You can see a lot of the tutorials that we've uploaded uh, are right here, like the Sievers tutorial, the Demon tutorial. A lot of people tag me uh, about all the, all the things that they've done, but here's my portfolio. I have made the mistake of not updating this portfolio in a long while. I, I just, I, I've, I've always said I'm going to sit down and do it, but I just haven't done it. I need to do it. I'll promise I'll do it before the, the end of this year because like this guy right here, it's like from two years, three years ago. Like I haven't uploaded any single thing in three years, which is uh, worrisome, right? Uh, however, uh, thankfully, I've, I've never like uh, been out of a job, so, so I'm, I'm doing good. But it, you definitely need to keep your portfolio updated. So don't follow my advice or my example in this thing. Follow my advice. Always keep your portfolio updated. And only, here's a very strong advice that I would give you, try to only upload things that you're really proud of, okay? Doesn't matter, it doesn't really matter if the things that you're doing now won't be good in like five or 10 years. That's fine. Like one of my first things, like this guy right here, this was seven years ago. And back then, I was really proud of this guy. It was probably my best character up to date. It was like poly painting Z Rush and um, uh, rendering Marmoset, I think I rendered, or I don't, know, I don't even remember where I rendered the thing. Um, but it was, it, it's an, a very old character. Now, if you compare it to one of my newest characters, and by newest, I mean uh, three years ago, uh, I'm, I'm definitely way more proud of this in regards to technique, execution, rendering, and stuff. And then if you compare this one to this one, I was even more uh, proud about this one. And I have one here that I haven't uploaded. I'm not sure why I haven't uploaded, but this is probably one of my favorite ones from last year. Where is it? Freya. It's a very cool character I did. And um, and like if you take a look at the materials, the rendering, the, the softness of the textures, like everything, I, I, I can definitely see my improvement. And people that see my portfolio will also be able to see that improvement. So even if a recruiter gets into your portfolio and they go like back, like really, really back here, and they're like, hey, this one's really bad. Like the normal maps and the textures looks bad. Yeah, but he did it seven years ago. And if I see this seven years ago, and then I see like the Freya that I just showed you uh, in this recent uh, years, they're like, okay, he's growing, he, he's learning, he's improving. That means that if we hire him, and if we nurture him and if we give him more tools and more knowledge, he's going to become a great artist so we can invest in the in the, in the the artist, right? So make sure to keep your portfolio up to date. Make sure you keep your information up to date as well. Uh, I'm not sure if I have my information here. Yeah, that's my that's my email, uh, your LinkedIn. Uh, just just make sure that people know. Like this demo reel, this is the demo reel I got after I graduated from, from Noman. Um, again, I, I should upload or uh, upgrade it because this was from four years ago, five years ago, 2016. So yeah, make sure to keep everything updated. Now, the other thing I was mentioning is we're going to be using or you're going to be using ArtStation as your like benchmark. OK, so depending on what you want, you're going to be taking a look and looking or, or actually looking for what people are delivering right now. 
So let's say you want to be a 3D modeler, but you want to be a 3D modeler of uh, weapons. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to go digital 3D. And then I'm going to go over here. I'm going to see if I can find like weapons. Sometimes there's like categories here, character, creatures, monsters. Let's go props. Let's go props. Okay, so you want to be a 3D artist that does props. So just by taking a quick look at what's going on here, you're going to be able to see what's the quality that people are looking for. You're going to have this thing, trending. Trending is usually like the cool stuff, right? It's the, the thing that, that is, uh, it's doing well and it's, uh, it's a success pretty much, right? It's trending. So if you manage to get your stuff into the trending page, you're already on the other side. You're going to be able to find a job. Probably not at the super high level studios, but there are going to be studios that are going to be looking at your job and you're going to be hired. You can get hired because you're already showing a good enough proficiency to deliver a job. So for instance, like this guy right here, uh, Onish Kenko Axinia. I'm not sure from where he's from, but I see this model and hey, it's clean. It's a clean model. The textures are clean. Um, it seems like the poly count is low enough for like a game asset. So this works perfectly fine. If I were doing a, if we were doing like a project here in the studio and I needed another modeler, he could be a candidate because he has what it takes to do it. If I take a look at this guy, for instance, now here, I'm going to say, okay, this guy or this girl, LOD Mondolini, not only is she good at uh, modeling because I can see very clean models. She's also good at texturing and rendering and composition because I can see that the composition here is actually really good. So the pieces that you upload, how you present yourself to the world is going to be super important because that's, that's your like presentation letter. And that's what, what they're going to understand. If I take a look at this guy from Attila uh, Jaeger. Um, I can see good modeling and I can see good textures, but that's it. I, I wouldn't judge his rendering skills with this uh, piece alone. If I were to investigate his profile and see like, hey, do you have any other renders? It doesn't seem like it. He, he, he seems to know what, uh, what goes on on the, on the modeling process, but I don't see that he understands rendering, at least at the, at the level that I would be looking for, right? So always make sure that to see what people are doing. Now, if you go to the latest, you're going to see a lot of stuff. There's going to be some really good stuff and there's going to be some really uh, not so good stuff. I'm not going to point out the not so good stuff right now because I don't want to be that guy that uh, goes in and says who is a good artist and who's a bad artist. But I just want to let you know, like this latest area inside of ArtStation, it's a perfect way to to or for you to personally check where you are in regards to the level of the industry of the world because most 3d artists upload their stuff right here so if you see a piece that you really like and you ask yourself could i do it could i do that piece could i do something similar to that piece and the answer is no and you need to practice you need to learn you need to get a couple of more tutorials or learn a little bit more from our free lessons and get your expertise up to the level where you meet that uh, specific piece that you saw. And at the same time, if you see something that's not so good, really bad or something, you're like, okay, I'm not there anymore. I was there because everyone started at that point, but I've been growing, I've been going up and now I'm in a very good position. And I do this exercise not only to teach my students how to like try and see where they are. I do it for myself. Like whenever I go into like the main page of art station, you're going to find the big guns, like the big guys, like the famous, the rock stars, we call them. And, uh, and these guys are amazing. Like I I've seen some stuff that I'm like, damn, I I'm not sure if I could do it uh, right now, of course, because I always uh, challenge myself to, to push forward. So, I mean, let's talk about one of the great ones, right? Grassetti. Grassetti is probably one of the most well-known uh, character artists. Rafael Grassetti from Sony Santa Monica. Uh, he worked on the God of War um, um, games or in the latest God of War. And if you see his work, I mean, it's just amazing. Like his work is beautiful. So what's the deal with him? How can I get there? I need to learn. If I see this and I see, okay, you know what? Like there's a lot of hard surface sculpting inside of Seabrush. I need to polish those skills. I need to go back, go over the new tools, see what's new on the on the newest uh, editions of the software. See how can I, how can I apply all of those things into my own work and just work from there. Now, take into consideration, and this is something that a very good teacher of us uh, taught us back at, uh, at Hollywood and Nomen. Um, he was like, hey. You need to understand that the Top Guns, like the, the big artists, they've been doing this for a long time. I believe Grossetti has been working on the 3D industry for like about 22 years or something. So right now I'm at 10 years. I'm hoping that by the time I get to 22 years of experience, I'm going to be at the same level as Grossetti. 
or better, right? Like that's 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 the mindset you need to have. You need to to always see the top guns, always see the the best guys right here. And instead of seeing it or seeing them and be like, "Hey, I'm never gonna get there. I'm never gonna be as good." No, I'm not as good right now, but I want to be as good as they are by the time I get to the point where they are. And the only way you're gonna be able to do that is by working hard, practicing a lot, and making sure that you're always learning and always improving. Okay, so. It's just life advice. Uh, this is a job at the end of the day. We're going to be getting a paycheck, of course, and we're going to be having fun because the projects are really, really cool, but it's a job. And in order to become very good at your job, you need to do it a lot. So just keep that in mind. This is not going to be free. You're not going to get like a chip and then uh, be immediately super proficient at 3D and, and that's it. That, that's, that's not how it's going to work, okay? So just, just keep that in mind. Now, uh, to finalize this, because we're, we're running a little bit... Um, long and I don't want to make this video super super long I don't want this to be like a monologue uh, there's another way in which you can make a little bit of money if you invest a little bit of time into the into the process so besides being a freelancer and being hired by companies besides having your own studio and again um, providing a service or besides being hired by a studio or a company to work for them uh, inside there's one more option inside of the in the on the 3d world and that is a uh, model selling so there's pages like TurboSquid, for instance, where you can create your own um, your own profile and you can upload things for people to download. So maybe you're really good at modeling. You, you already got a hang of it and, and you want to start getting some money. Well, you could go online, download a, a couple of image planes from like bikes and then just upload the objects right here. You upload the object and every time someone buys this bicycle, uh, you're going to get a share of the profit. How does this work? Usually you need to upload a very clean model, so your topology has to be impeccable. Usually people prefer when there are textures associated with them, depending for what uh, like specific render. Nowadays, there's an, an option to even ask the guy to, to export the textures in different formats if you want to. Uh, but Triple Squid is a great way to sell it. There's also another uh, site called CG Trader. CG Trader, and uh, it's very similar. You, you just look for whatever you're looking for, and uh, if the model is there and you want to buy it, then you just buy it. And you can do, you, you, I know a lot of people, I personally haven't done this because I have been lucky enough to always be on a job um, doing other, other cool stuff. But I know people that have done this and, and they make a, quite a bit of a profit. ArtStation also has its store, the marketplace. So you can also uh, upload uh, models, sculptures and stuff here and, and sell them. Unreal Engine has its own marketplace. Unity, I believe, has its own like community store or something. So there are ways to do it. Now, what I do recommend is make sure that you, whatever you upload, is is a, a synonym synonym of, of quality of perfection like that your models are as good as possible because believe it or not i've found things here like for instance let's look for something super simple like a barrel like i found barrels here that are really 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 bad right so, so you take a look at for instance this barrel right here 50 bucks for this i mean i wouldn't buy it so yeah, <laughs> and uh, there are way better models for even less price, uh, but that's that's something that you're going to have to navigate, okay? So uh, what's recommended? You should be very good at Maya modeling, We or I would recommend the, the intro to Maya that I just released a couple of weeks ago or a couple of months ago that we just released. Um, you need to be good at texturing. Any of the ZBrush courses uh, use a little bit of substance, so you're, you should be able to to get there as well. ZBrush, of course, is really important to do uh, high frequency details and, and sculpting. So as many softwares as you can learn, and and the better you can get at doing things, the the easier it's gonna be to get your foot on the door and start earning money as a 3D modeler. I'm gonna leave you with one last piece of advice. Just one last piece of advice. Thank you, everyone, who has been able to uh, hold all of this uh, or, or wait all of this time. The last little piece of advice is on choosing what to model, okay? So anytime you're going to choose something, I, I always find that people have a little bit of a hard time trying to understand, um, like, what to do. The best idea is go for something that excites you, that looks very, very cool, that you're going to be able to deliver to the best 
of your abilities. Like don't don't go for something super super complicated if you're just starting, and don't go for something super super simple if you're already a pro. So go for something that's that's gonna show your current level at the best of your abilities, and go for something that is uh, I would say marketable or or that you're gonna be able to use it for something, right? So for instance any of these props, like if you were to do any of these props, you can very easily show that you could work on a Western uh, game or on a medieval game, and it's going to be fine. If you do like any of these props, you're also going to be able to show that you have what it takes to work on a, like on a fantasy whimsical uh, production. What are the things that I would not recommend? I personally would go out of my way, or I would not, no, I would personally avoid at all, at all costs, any sort of 3D fan art. Okay. So anytime you're doing fan art, fan art is really cool. It gets a lot of likes. It is very easy to recognize. But the problem with fan art is that no matter what you do, people are always going to compare your fan art to the original one. And if you're not like really, really up there, they're going to find flaws and, and they're going to be like criticizing it quite heavily. So I personally recommend avoiding fan art. So for instance, a lot of people that I know like to do um, or like to try like the Gears of War Lancer. It's one of the models. Like every time I ask, I, I ask my students, hey, bring some concept pieces and, and let's see what, who can model what. They'll bring this one. And I'm really like, dude, you're just learning Maya. This is the first time you're using Maya. You're probably not going to be able to like really nail this concept. It's not super difficult. It is complex, but it's not super difficult. However, you're not there yet. You will be there. You need to push yourself, practice and get there. Uh, I have a, a story of, of uh, another teacher that, used to ask some of the, his students to model a pencil, a simple pencil. He'll be like, model a pencil, but model it to perfection. Like every single nook and cranny, every single edge loop, every single like hard edge and soft edge, make sure your pencil is perfect. Like every single little thing here on the metal bits, the texture perfectly defined. Like if you can do a perfect pencil, then you could jump onto the next thing and then the next thing. And then the next thing and sooner rather than later you're going to be modeling like tanks and planes and airships and very cool characters and stuff but you need to start little by little i prefer that method i prefer to start uh in small chunks and all of those small chunks will create your portfolio and that portfolio will be able to open doors for you so don't be afraid this is a challenging uh, road as with anything in life but as long as you keep pushing as long as you keep practicing every day and you keep learning you're going to be there. So that's it for now, guys. I'll see you back on the next one. Bye-bye.